forget everything that you think you know about comics. Some say the battle of good versus evil is never ending because evil always survives. Some say that there are two types of people in this world, those who drink beer and those who enjoy a good comic. But damn it, we are the bridge. And to that we say cheers. We are your guardians, your watchful protectors from everything mundane. Because in the real world, you either die a hero or you drink long enough to see yourself become the villain. There's a war going on out there. How can you be sure you're on the right side? The ageless debate of what's right and wrong brought to your headphones with the simplest of solutions. With great beer comes great responsibility. And we accept that responsibility. For in brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape our sight. We are hop heroes, bringing the relevance of great beer and comic book stories to life. Hello and welcome to another edition of Hop Heroes, a show where we talk about our favorite drinks and our favorite heroes. I'm your host, Jordan Arith, and with me as always, we have talented artist and comic enthusiast, J.R. Gonzalez. How's it going? It's going swell, man. I, I like just it. just walked out of the theater, so oh, I am fresh off. I'm all fresh. Yeah. <laughs> How you been though, buddy? Been a uh, Yeah, it's been a little bit. Um, good. Uh, busy. Um, probably. Oh, you know what? We probably should mention that we're that, well. We're teaming up with Action City, so I've been on the Instagram a lot. So that's fun for me. But, whoa, whoa. Uh, <laughs> what's up, Doug? <laughs> our boy, yeah. Doug. Doug. Awesome, man. Then we got our third host, uh, the one, the only, Zach Barlow. How you living, kid? Chilling, dog. Chilling. How you doing? I'm good, man. Hey, how was your Valentine's Day? You know, it's tis the season of love. You're the romantic <laughs> of the group. It's pretty good, Jordan. Any highlights you want to share? Um, so we went to a restaurant uh, in Seattle called The Pink Door. And uh, that's about all I'll share because the other information uh, you are only for our Patreon listeners. Because it's not appropriate what, for this op- that this mean? median medium, <laughs> but it was a wonderful day. Our listeners, yeah. So, so what you're saying is, if people start paying for episodes, then you're just gonna unveil all of your sexual exploits on the mic. Yep. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm paying. So, who's with me? I am buying our own episodes so I can listen to this shit. Oh my goodness. <laughs> if we, so for I'm all sure you listeners, I'm sure there, Alicia will be thrilled about this new she's business gonna be, venture. She's gonna be a star. Okay, <laughs> uh, I think uh, our our listeners are excited about our Patreon. Uh, if we create one, because it's gonna be soft core porn by Zach, and I'm 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 here for it, and I know the world's ready for that. Yeah, uh, it's just gonna be you. But I there's think. how many beard products are used in the bedroom? Uh, is it le- more or less than three <laughs> beard products oh yeah i know that you get <laughs> fucking weird and i how proud you are of that i would like to speak to my lawyer and i plead the fifth on the question <laughs> all right well that's gonna be the first question on the patreon uh well let's get out of the weeds here with the <laughs> sex sex life and go into the, our topic of the day uh we are talking birds of prey uh the new Wait, i saw movie sonic came to theaters Oh, uh, you did it. not see Sonic. No, I'm so joking. Full of shit. I'm joking. You, I, oh, oh my god. god, that's okay. So oh. I wish, you know, I wish. I was excited. Sonic came out. That would have been. Ben Schwartz god. is the voice. It's a video game movie, and I bring it up to do an episode, and I get fucking roasted I know. in our JR group chat by Jr. JR just like, what do you got against Sonic, bro? Blame on nothing. I was like, wow, I, this is hilarious. I'm, I I enjoy any you know any game where you get to co- collect coins and and roll around. <laughs> outside so, so you don't like mario what the fuck bro That's exactly what you do in mario, mario. And they're rings they're not coins they're rings, Sorry, rings. so you never watched sonic and tails growing up with knuckles and the cartoon gang no jr thinks so- Sega genesis jr thinks sonic is trash and everybody that likes sonic is trash yeah dude jesus it's dark i like how they are had to like fix the the uh, CGI on him because his teeth was fucked up and people got Still upset. Like shit. I can't believe they I'm they not did that. Lie, but their they first could... attempt was absolute trash. Yeah, oh, I it saw was that. Garbage. Yeah, I'm not defending the CGI of the first 
trailer. Don't get me wrong. I just, I mean, yeah, it's got, I, it's got good I just like how they had that happen, and we still had Ben Affleck as Batman. That's just like they got the, they got the CGI to change millions of dollars to redo the whole thing, and okay. uh, but we could not get rid of Ben Affleck and his uh, dragon tattoo on his back. Okay, it's <laughs> really bad. It's a really yeah. bad tattoo. Um, well, we got Robert Pattinson now. We got the new suit reveal and everything. Like, yeah, yeah I've gotten to a new yeah. platform in the Batman universe. And speaking of the Batman universe, let's go back to our actual topic. Uh, Birds of Prey, uh, starring Margot Robbie, obviously, and Ewan McGregor, um, directed by Kathy Yan and written by Christina Hodgson, who uh, don't have a whole lot of knowledge on their background. Um, neither of them have a whole lot of work that I'm familiar with. Christina Hodgson, she wrote uh, The Bumblebee, the most recent uh, <clears throat> Transformers movie. I, yeah, I knew um, that, yeah. Uh, she also uh, is... In the process of writing Batgirl and The Flash. So a couple of movies with some strong female leads, which is awesome. And Kathy Ann, um, I don't know if she's directed anything that I've heard of. According to my mother in 2016 and Dead Pigs. So never heard of either of them. Yeah, um, so so two, two women uh, new to the game with some big, big name stars in the movie. And, you know, it's out. We're reacting to it. So I guess we can start off before we get into too many of the thoughts and opinions with a little story time, JR. Yeah, I what, actually what do listeners need to know. Let's um let's talk about some history because I really feel like there's a lot of little things that are pretty cool about the Birds of Prey to, you know, some of the things that are are maybe not in the movie, but um like the original lineup obviously does not have Harley Quinn. Um it's more of the Black Canary, the uh Oracle, Oracle which was um Barbara Gordon, you know, after she got shot uh, by Joker. So she's in a wheelchair. And mm. um, the Huntress comes on a little later on. Um, it's actually called the, the Gail Simone era when she took over, uh, when Gail Simone took over the series in 2003. And she added the Huntress uh, to that lineup. But, uh, and then obviously there's like various, there's like a ton of members that came along. Um, but the Birds of Prey was actually kind of noted in a, like, I think a Superman. Like, they, it was like a quick glimpse, like, of this team up. And I think they actually said the name Birds of Prey in, in the Superman issue. If I'm correct on that. And then um, I think the original, like, title, it had like a mini series, which is, um, if you check out uh, Action City, there's a, actually, they have the one, two comic book out at the shop and it's called birds of prey and it's got the huntress on there or um it's got the black canary on there and i think that came out in 1996 if i'm right on that okay. um but yeah there's a lot of uh publication history to it it um one of the cool things is the black canary and there's a lot of history there from mother to daughter taking over the role, which I had no clue about any of that stuff. Cause I'm not really mm -hmm. a black canary fan. Um, and moving into the, the birds of prey. So there's kind of that history and obviously everybody knows who Harley Quinn is at this point in their life. And, um, Margot Robbie playing her doing a good job there. So, uh, but the movie follows mostly Harley Quinn and then the other, characters get added in throughout the movie right and mm -hmm. uh harley quinn is moving on from the joker uh they broke up and she wanted to live her own life after having her feelings hurt a hundred times i guess i don't know and you know she's an emotional wreck <laughs> and the sympathy so, just oozes out of your voice i love it no i love i like i loved it um but she she was in a it's Harley Quinn you know she's gonna kill you if you <laughs> keep your ears, um, yeah. so she's as violent as ever, and uh, starts this with um, it, it's the Black Mask and so the only re only reason I know who the Black Mask is from the Red Hood, uh, comic, and the Red Hood animated movie, where he uh, is taking over the town, um, basically the Joker is in jail, um. Batman's been kind of, kind of not as strong, you know, maybe a little bit of hiatus. And um, if it, Red Hood will go into a different, maybe another. It's actually a great storyline, but um, that's where I know the the Black Mask. He's basically a gangster, um, 
And in the comics, I, I don't think he can take the mask off. I think it gets like melted to his face or something, the black mask. Mm. Um, and in, in this movie, he, um, Ewan McGregor, who's going to be on a new Star Wars TV show, by the way. It, in out. the comics, does he take people's faces off too? Or is that just a movie I, thing? I think that's a movie thing. But I don't really, honestly, the black mask and all that stuff, I have no idea. Like, I just, he's a gangster who's, actually, I do remember, like, him being, like, a clean freak and, like, really picky about things um, and certain things. But, like, as, like, a total, like, I just knew he was ruthless, but not as ruthless as the Joker. Like, he was scared of the Joker the whole time, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but he's the gotcha. protagonist um, in the uh, in the story, and for he's some the reason... protagonist. Oh, I'm sorry. The uh, He's the villain. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, the, He's the, the villain. Antagonist. Antagonist. Yeah. And, uh, I wish he was a protagonist. It'd be dope. Yeah. But uh, he is definitely the, uh, the guy stirring the pot. And storylines come together. Black Canary gets introduced to uh, Harley Quinn through Black Mask. Am I right? And yeah. and then kind of. Uh, she works at his club. At his club. Harley Quinn goes to his club. Yeah, she was a singer in the club, and so. Um, but yeah, that's you know that's kind of the beginning of the movie, I guess. I mean, how far do we want to go? Do we want to talk about the whole thing? Like, do we want to yeah, give I away mean, more spoilers? I think the beauty of this movie is that it's not the story that is what's important. It's just the overall enjoyment of what happens. I mean, it's, it's a it's a popcorn flick, and it's a lot of fun. Um, it's basically, from my perspective, it was Harley Quinn handling grief and independence for the first time and not having a, to work for a man or a master in her life and just kind of being out on her own, how she handles that. And she handled it through chaos and destruction and Which a little is- bit of love. Yeah, which is too pretty cool. She, you know, she, uh, but she made friends in this too. She was a lot, you know. I think she was alone a lot. And if you watch uh, any of the animated stuff about Harley Quinn, or you read anything like comic book wise, she has friends, but doesn't. You know what I mean? Like Poison Ivy's her friend, but they kind of at times fight and they kind of go against each other. So she kind of made that was kind of the different thing about the story. And they, I think they try to push that as well because every time she would double cross everybody in the movie as yeah. well you know at times well, it's, it's hard to maintain a relationship when everybody involved in the relationship is absolutely out of their mind and i feel like <laughs> harley yes. quinn is first of all absolutely out of her mind and then the people that she associates with whether it be black canary or huntress or poison ivy or the joker are also batshit so yeah you know sparks will fly eventually yeah <laughs> yeah needless to say or confetti you know depending on what kind of gun she's carrying <laughs> yeah uh, <clears throat> which i have to say that scene where she goes into the fucking police station with that confetti cannon and just mercs the whole fucking police force like that was dope dude yeah 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 that i feel like harley quinn had a lot of dope ass scenes like that i w- walked away from just being like wow that was a that was really rad like that scene was one of them the, the, the another scene was i think she was being interrogated and she gets slapped and then when she gets slapped, she like goes into this like mm. dance routine where she's like dancing yeah, with like all a these Moulin people. Rouge kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that was a really cool scene too. Yeah, also, it, I it, think it the soundtrack for the movie overall was is fucking fire. I, I, I I'm killer, still dude. listening to it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Was it was the credit song Rico Nasty? The credit song? I'm not, I can't remember. Yeah, I don't know. We were walking out of the theater and Sammy was like, "Is that Rico Nasty? Because that's like her new." Her new bitty, she's all up on. Um, But no, I mean, the story is just, there's a diamond that this family owns, and in the diamond there was these coordinates to their their entire fortune, and everybody's after this diamond. Like an account number, right? Lasered in. Yeah, 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 Yeah. and Black Mask is after it to get the wealth to buy off the entire city, and this pickpocket, this girl ends up stealing it just because she steals everything and she swallows it and then everybody's putting a hit on the girl's head and Harley is trying to protect her slash save her own tail slash slash also also get the diamond (laughs) yeah yeah yeah, it's a whole thing everybody wants the diamond (laughs) turn her over to the people sell her (laughs) off basically yeah yeah so I mean the story's not the the craziest part of it it's just the enjoyment and the action and the fight scenes and like Zach said the fight scenes in this are just fucking cool I mean it's it's like a mix of kickboxing meets gymnastics 
Yeah, with, MMA. Like, they do a lot of uh, MMA. Yeah. Almost some roller derby fighting, and there was like yeah. this like. <laughs> Harley has like this like drunken master to her because she's like she's almost like oh what's happening and like floating around around but then she has a fucking roundhouse and takes somebody out it's like accidental ass kicking to yeah. a, to a certain extent I, I I got a little bit of domino vibe from her because like she like picks up the penny and then like a fucking arrow goes overhead and kills somebody like just getting lucky at times yeah. but almost like it's, it's on purpose I don't know it's cool how they choreograph the character because to me Harley always seemed like she was just bumbling about like she doesn't really seem extraordinary in any way besides her just psychosis but like she in a fight scene she's like you said she's just kind of like swaying back and forth like she's not like really just a beast but she always like wins like she just finds a way to like accidentally mm-hmm. kick your ass every single yeah. time and i just feel like that yeah, was like an is... interesting way to to portray the character her and all the other girls like they're not going to outstrength anybody but they have fucking kicks that will break your face and they have these very unique ways of creating leverage. Like oh. they're always like running up walls and doing flips and shit to like yeah arm I, bar them. I, and... I felt like all three of them had very different fighting styles. Like I felt like Harley. I think Drunken Master is like a good way to put it. I would say just like bumbling luck. Like I feel like her fighting <laughs> style is just like chaotic, lucky. She has a giant ass hammer and just she just fucks you up that way. And then the Huntress mm-hmm. is very much like assassin like like she's super highly trained very like yeah. kung fu style like she's really gonna like she knows what she's doing she knows why she's there and she knows that she's gonna like break every bone in your body and then i felt like black canary was like almost like this like muay thai kickboxer like do you remember sagat from uh street fighter <laughs> when he was yes. just like tiger yeah. tiger yeah. tiger claw <laughs> yes. i felt like that was black canary's fighting style like all yeah, legs, I mean, mostly legs, and then like half a chest, and then arms, and then it's just like, all right, let's yeah. do this. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, dude. And that's a great they, description of the that. Black Canary because she's definitely like, um, there's a couple like books that were her, and obviously her and the Green Arrow are like married a lot, of, you know, and so she can do uh, yeah, <laughs> and she totally like her leg strength is is completely like overwhelming. Like, I and mean, she doesn't have any superpowers other than her her yell. Like her fight, like she fights most of the time, and that yell is is like the last straw where she's like, you know, trying to save like a bunch of people or something. But most of the time, yeah. she's whooping she also ass. Has like devilish like, good looks. That is Zach's, true. Zach's got a crush apparently, but you can find out about that on the Patreon episode. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's keep it that's family not, that's friendly. Um, <laughs> that's but gross. yeah. Um, but yeah, that's absolutely, that's a, that's a good take because, you know, in, in the movie, they, there was some times where, I mean that, I don't, what's her name? Um, she was a child actress, right? And I forget her name. Oh, Rosie, Zo- Zoe Perez? Kravitz. Yeah. Oh. Zoe. That's not Zoe Kravitz. Yeah, the actress, it's not? No, it's, uh. Black Canary? Uh, yeah, that was, uh, Mr., uh, sh- her last, her, her brother is that Shmule guy. Um, and she was a child actress. Yeah, her on, name is um, Journey Smollett Bell. Yeah. Wow, she was child I thought actress. that was Zoe Kravitz the entire time. That is wild. Because she's no. black, Zach. Is that why? Oh Bro, come on. God. They look similar. Man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> they look alike. It just reminds me of my Lando take in the fucking Mandalorian. <laughs> I swear that was Lando. Uh, uh, yeah, but they, even they say that at the end, like, I, I was amazed that you could do those high kicks and those tight pants. Like yeah, was, those. I, like, how is that possible? Yeah, it was a big deal, and that's how it is. It in in the comics too. She's powerful like that. So, um, the Huntress, though, like super savage. I mean, the way that she that slide God, scene damn it. when she like jumped up on the slide <laughs> with the guy slide under her and then fucking landed on him and just started fucking murking him. Yeah, I, I I thought the Huntress was like look, honestly the the weakest character out of the three i thought that the fuck yeah but i think that that one slide scene was i thought i I agree with you i think the slide scene was dope i just feel like i think that margot robbie did an incredible job as harley quinn i think that that was like the highlight i think that black canary was really really cool um and her fight scenes were cool i felt like the huntress was miscast like I, 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 just, I just felt like the actress, she like if, I've watched a couple interviews with her and she's very much kind of like um um kind of like quirky and goofy and nerdy and like kind of Zoe Deschanel vibes. And I feel mm. like that like kind of 
translates over even into her her character in Black Canary. And I think Black Canary is the one that... Or, I mean, Huntress, yeah, excuse me. And I feel like Huntress is the one that can't be... Like, I imagine Huntress being, like, you know, trained all her life, assassin mentality, just super fucking hardcore, like some Kill Bill shit. You know what I mean? Like, like that's what I imagine the Huntress being. And her... The actor that's just kind of, like, quirky and goofy... And then, but she could also kick your ass. Like, I just didn't, it just didn't play well. I just didn't buy it. Yeah, that, I, I 100% agree with that. I think that it was, there was some awkward parts where she was, like, saying jokes and it came from this character that was supposed to be so serious. And maybe that was their goal, but I, I think it would have played better to have one person that has a little bit of seriousness to him because everybody, everybody else is just kind of like. Yeah, she was kind of a in go. between. Like, she made, like, little quirky that you know comments and at times where i didn't believe it like i in fact i think amber and i were walking out and i'm like i didn't believe the huntress at all yeah. character at all the whole yeah, time like, i'm like she's supposed to be this revenge driven individual and yet she still jokes here and there and she should you know, be even... the most badass one out of all three yeah yep. and i st- and just she was just i don't know she was just very uh it's just i i felt like it was not a very good description of who the huntress is and i i have read about the huntress a little bit more and, and she's definitely a badass serial you know she turns into batgirl every, every once in, i think at one point and super serious like super serious and um it was just I, that was i would say one of the weakest parts is her her character in in the, in the movie when the actress playing her was i don't know just didn't believe it didn't believe it at all like when you I watch agree. margot you you know she's Harley Quinn like she you know yeah. you like, like believe Mar- it the whole time. Margot has become Harley Quinn. Like, yeah, in, like, in a, like she is Margot. I feel like has defined or further defined the Harley Quinn meta, and I yeah. feel like everything that she does moving forward is going to continue to rewrite and re solidify the Harley Quinn meta for like until I don't know I, I can't think of anybody else that could do it better. Like I just feel like she has she is Harley Quinn. Like, I just, I'm just like, yep, that's it. Like, that's, I believe it. To and, yeah, like, through and through. Yep. What, what does Amber think of, of Margot's performance? She's a huge Harley Quinn fan. She loves her. She's like, Amber just thinks she's like one of the most beautiful people on the, obviously the most beautiful lady on the planet and playing Mar- uh, Harley Quinn. If everybody, I mean, Harley Quinn is one of the most beautiful DC characters ever created. I mean, the way they draw her, draw her and the way they, you know, under all the mask and, um, Mar- Margo de- has this, she's not like, um, she's, she seems very powerful. Like, I don't like to, I mean, like, I'm not trying to critique anybody's physique, but her physique is very similar to the actual character. <laughs> always comes to physique, always dude. Get here. I'm sorry. It's not, I'm not Male trying, or female. We're going to get to this point. I'm sorry if anybody gets offended. My, my goal is when you read comics, there's a lot of the, the physique when they draw them is, is even men in the comics there's a certain physique and sometimes when they cast some of these characters their their physique does not match uh captain marvel and um <laughs> and Mar- margo does a, an amazing job um she did an amazing job in i Tanya, and she did uh, uh obviously an amazing job here and and she just matches the character so much and amber loves that like amber you know it's been reading harley quinn for i don't know the last 15 years or whatever and um she's even before it got really famous and she's, you know, she fits that character a hundred percent. And, um, I'm pretty sure she would leave me for her if she had the chance. <laughs> <laughs> we all would JR. We all would. Yeah. Um, I, I agree. I think that this is such a perfect casting and it's, it's like, uh, Robert Downey and, and Tony Stark. It's like that. Yes. Yeah, that's perfect. Pairing. Yeah. I, I think agree. That, like you don't land those very often. And, and I think that like, yeah, Harley Quinn was perfect. I thought that this might be my favorite, Ewan McGregor, I've seen like he he killed the Black Mask. I think he was hilarious. He played, I thought it was super played the funny. manic, yeah, like just zero to a hundred in a second, and doing what like being like the the super like powerful boss, but also being like a little child that lost his parents' money and his like <laughs> right hand man's always telling him what to do, and he's like, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Like he almost had a little bit of a Joker too, and like his just like a little bit decisiveness and his just whole attitude. I I loved I loved yeah. his character. I thought that was great. Yep, that was good. Um, Ewan McGregor is really good, though. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of a movie that I really don't like him in. Um, he's always very likable as a person. I watched the the documentary where he, him and his friend went around the, um, traveled on his motorcycles, you know, down through Africa and everything like that. And, 
Uh, he's a super likable, uh, likable dude, and he always comes across on that. You know, he's obviously played some very iconic roles as Obi Wan, and mm -hmm. um, you know, Train Spotting was a really good movie and and stuff like that. So um, he's, he's always very... so serious, though. Like it's it's cool to see him play a more loose, weirder role. You know, I feel like he's always more of like a moral compass, British accent, serious guy, and. I don't know. It was cool to see him just be a fucking villain and be ruthless and cutting faces off and like yeah. like when he was when he was telling that girl to get up on the table and dance and like rip her fucking dress off and shit like that was just like that was intense. Damn. That, that was intense. intense. <laughs> that was intense. Like, damn, I remember that being like wow, this that that's a villain. Yeah, right there. That was a that was that was a cool take on a DC villain where they didn't let the family friendly shit ruin it. They let him go dark. Yeah, the, yeah, the movie actually was fairly dark, and, and I at, at points, and and that was a surprise to me because I went with Alicia, and she was just like, "Is this movie going to be like Alicia hates scary movies? She just cannot even handle it." And mm -hmm. she asked me if it was going to be scary, and I told her, "No, nah, I actually think this is just going to be like a silly comic book movie," and which it was. But there were moments like when um, he was uh, cutting the faces off of that family when I was just like, whoa, mm -hmm. like this is not what I expected. Or even the scene that you mentioned when he made that girl dance on the table. It's just like, oh, this is getting a little intense, which I appreciate. So yeah. I'm, yeah. Glad, I'm glad they let it I get agree. there instead of trying to keep it like PG rated the whole time. That was such a good way of like letting you know the vibe. Like it was early in the movie when he's cutting the family's faces off, and then he's like, "You can leave the daughter." And then she has, she's like, "Thank you," and she has a snot bubble. He's like, "Oh my, <laughs> gross! Take her out. Never mind. Change my mind." And then just has her killed because <laughs> she had a snot bubble. And maybe that's a play to his clean freak thing that you're talking about, Jr. Because he, he never really went that he's a clean freak. He's always he wearing gloves. Bubble. He's always wearing gloves. Yeah, that's true. That, so it's very subtle, but yeah, I guess he is. I saw more of like his his a fucking like castle or whatever it was just like a little loft and it was empty and then there's just like artifacts mm -hmm. of weird shit and then one table so yeah he maybe is a neat freak i don't know interesting um okay well any other thoughts on the uh on the film itself before we go into craft or trash mm -hmm. oh, no, not good. really i it's it, just i guess for me it was just it was it, they call it birds of prey but it was really really um more of a harley quinn sequel movie yeah. um and uh, just a, a side note on Birds of Prey, they actually had that TV show that came out not too long, or you know, I don't know, like ten years ago or something. Did you guys ever see that TV show? No. Mm -hmm. So the TV show was obviously like the WB. So before the WB turned into this, you know, CW or whatever, and you got all these, you know, DC Universe shows, and yeah. it was a, uh, um, it was a very like. It was off of Birds of Prey, but it had the original character names, but some of it was different. Um, like uh, Dina Mayer, which was obviously Black Canary's mom, was uh, as the Oracle, and that actually Barbara Gordon. And then uh, the Huntress was a meta human from the daughter of Batman and Catwoman. So, mm -hmm. uh, and she turned into. Um, uh, she was actually the huntress in the TV show. And that show was, it was okay. I think I only remember watching like a couple episodes of it, but it was very, very WB ish, if you know what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> kind of a weird scenario. Yeah. But, um, and uh, yeah, that was kind of, uh, uh, like I said, it's more, of, you know, they call it Birds of Prey, but it, it's, it's like, it's more of a Harley Quinn sequel to me than anything. What's the name of the group with Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, and Catwoman? Aren't they a trio? Um, they there, have a name. There was the Sirens of Gotham. Uh, Sirens. Of yeah. Gotham. Okay. And that was actually a really great series too. I have we have those comics, and that what that's a very um the covers seem bubbly, but the it's not. It's a very uh dark comic book as well. And like I said, there's like there's a lot of them. There's a, there's the Sirens. There's um there's a I think of uh. A lot of miniseries with with all three of them together, or just Catwoman and Harley Quinn, and I think Catwoman and Harley Quinn always have issues, which is makes so sense. I, yeah. I, before we go to uh, uh, our ratings, I want to just pose a couple questions to you guys. So, yeah. okay. when we first saw Suicide Squad, mm -hmm. did you guys guess that the character that was going to get a solo spinoff was going to be Harley Quinn, or did you think it would might have been someone else? I thought it was Harley Quinn. She stole the show as well in that movie. 
Um, yeah. Did, Jordan, did you even watch it? Wasn't it? I've, did, I've watched it. I've watched it eventually. Oh jeez. Yeah, uh, on TV. Did you? <laughs> you had to wait till it's on TNT <laughs> with commercials. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't understand yeah, yeah. why everybody hates on Suicide Squad so much. By the way, I liked like, it. I, I don't liked think Suicide that movie's Squad. Not bad. It's not very, it's yeah, not very good. I liked either, it. The though. only thing I didn't like about Suicide Squad <laughs> was the uh, the villain choice, um, which I thought was very annoying. But uh, I I figured. I mean, she Margot Robbie did such a great job in that movie as well. I mean, she yeah. turned the cosplay community around, obviously. <laughs> yeah. And then, I mean, uh, that's what I mean when I say her, like she's she's a meta defining. Like, I, yeah. even in Suicide Squad, she was not even the main character of Suicide Squad. But no, I felt like by the end of the movie, you're like, okay, the only thing you remember from Suicide Squad to me is, like, really Harley Quinn. Like, I just feel like yep. she was just a exactly. dominant force in the film, and nobody else can That's really with Will with Smith, her. and she outshined Will Smith, which is fucking cool. Yeah. It's yeah. Impressive. Yep. yep. Not many can say that, yep. besides Jaden, because I'm a huge Jaden fan. I love Will Smith, too. Uh, one more. One more question. One more question. All right, so you got Harley Quinn, you got Poison Ivy, you got Catwoman, fight to the death, and and you gotta you gotta pick one to represent you because if you if you pick wrong, then you you yourself die. Who are you taking? Poison Ivy. She's OP. Um, God, you know, I'm gonna go with Harley Quinn. She just what? seems to get yes, and I, I feel like Harley Quinn has no sh- like doesn't even deserve to be in the same room. But she just, has the fucking luck factor, dude. She's she, got more to her than she puts out there. Like, it's a front, you know? It, it is a front, else. and she's very, very um, – actually, a, a lot of times her – when she when she gets into these things – I mean, yes, there's actually a, 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 um, a, a book where she has to go after Poison Ivy, and Poison Ivy, you know, kicks her ass a couple times. But there, there are times where she figures out a way – like, she plans ahead, you know? She's always, like – I think we forget how smart she actually is because of the way she yeah, acts. She, she is but, smart. Yeah, she she is a smart person. But she always has like these plans and she actually teams up with Batman a lot more than people think and um she calls him, you know, obviously she calls him Bats and uh Batman I think enjoys working with her than anybody else because of how um strategic she can be. Like she'll set she'll set shit up and Poison Poison Ivy is such an emotional creature. Like the way they portrayed her in um, the Batman movie was not right. Uh, she's such an emotional individual that she goes off all the time because her she always just everybody humans are evil and plants are right, and she turns into this crazy un uh, like just strategic individual, and she just goes all out. And there are times where she gets knocked the fuck out all the time, even with all this power she has. And uh, Catwoman can give two shits about anything so she just you know runs away all the time yeah, yeah I, I, I just i that just feel not. i just feel like poison ivy is oh, like if you like go from just abilities poison ivy is op like okay she's like God so mode. who wins in a fight between spider-man and batman then bro because i feel like this is the exact same conversation oh, and you're geez. supporting my argument in that conversation bro batman would fucking wipe the floor with spider-man <laughs> and you could <laughs> you're not going straight up ability otherwise there's uh, no okay. way all right all right, let's get out of this. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's deep. a never-ending argument for the last three years. I cannot believe it. I'm in too deep. All right, so craft your trash. I'll start it off this week. Um, I think it's a craft. I think that it's a, a good movie, and I, I enjoyed it a lot. I think you go into it with the right expectations, you'll love it. Mm-hmm. It reminded me a lot of Aquaman. Not really the most important, groundbreaking storyline. Not overly serious, no relationship really, just pure entertainment. I mean, Aquaman had Mera in that relationship, but like it's just like a pure fun popcorn flick. Lots of action, cool fight scenes, colors, explosions, outfits are awesome, um, and it's just fun. And the the dialogue's clever, it's witty, and the characters are lovable. Um, if I had to take any downside on it, um, I didn't like the. We talked about Huntress; she was not believable. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the kid. I thought the kid was kind of bleh yeah just a just a nuisance and not really a lot of personality to her and i didn't really buy why harley would care so much about the kid because the kid didn't do anything to like make her care <laughs> she was just kind of around yeah um so that i didn't like that part um there was a couple obviously there's gonna be a couple things that always stick out to me that don't make sense to me and i hold them i hold them to my chest but i think that 
Like when she's in the scene where she's with the kid in her apartment and the guy shoots the bomb in her window. Like there was cops outside her door, like banging on her door and the bomb goes in the window and then all of a sudden she just runs out her front door and there's no cops anymore. Like just, yeah, there's a couple of scenes a, like that, actually. That. Like when she's rolling on her uh, roller skates at the end and the Huntress shows up all of a sudden on her bike and yeah, pulls her. Yeah. Like that was, I felt like that was a scene that wasn't was in very... a fight like the scene before. Yeah, and she was, like, way behind. Like, she had to go find her motorcycle, had to get her helmet on, you know, and then find out where she's at, actually. I felt like that was not real. Like, I know movies aren't realistic, but, like, that was definitely, like, cinematic adjustment. Yeah, and and the the final battle in the Funhouse, which was a dope-ass battle, like, nobody had guns. They all came in there with, like, fist fights. (laughs) I mean, come on. Like, it it just was – they did it for the – the effect and, and and that's why you, you got to go in this with the right expectations. It's not going to blow your mind and it's not all going to make sense. It's not going to win an Oscar. It's not the no Oscar. no. So I thought it was it was good enough. I gave it a seven point five. I think it's a seven five. Wow. I think it's solid and fun and and you'll enjoy it. But there's not much, not a whole lot of depth to dive into it, and that's probably why this is going to be one of our our shorter episodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zach, what about you, man? I mean, honestly, I don't really have anything significant to add to what you just said. Like I I pretty much agree with everything that you just said. Um, I think that you set your expectations and, you know, it's just going to be like a fun comic book movie. It's funny. Margot Robbie is like a straight on star. And so you just get to kind of bask in her glory. And it's and it's a really cool, you know, way to spend an afternoon. Um, You know, it's not like groundbreaking. You're not going to remember everything about this movie in a week or even or a month. Um, but you know, Harley Quinn is awesome. Like, I think that's moving forward. That's what you come away with. Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn is awesome. And the more I get to see Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn, the better. Cause I think it's fucking awesome. Um, and yeah. So, so I think it's, it's a, it's a craft. It's, it's a good movie, but it's not like, you know, it's not like going to make any top lists of mine ever. Um, so I'd, I'd give it like a, like a 6.5. Okay. Close it out, Jay. Right. So, um, I've I've actually thought about this because I've actually watched it was like uh, what a week ago that I've seen this, so it's a little bit um a little bit worn, like not to where I can remember everything. So, but I, I've been going back on on fourth in this because uh between a a six point two to a seven, and I, I I have to make a decision here because a lot of times, like I ex- you guys ex- said exactly what i would think as well um and you you do walk out feeling really warm about margot robbie as harley quinn like you she she does steal the show every time so um i i have to when i rate these things i have to rate them by how i feel when i walk out i have to rate them by how um enjoyable you know how fast the movie feels while you're watching it um i have to feel a little bit kind of watching the audience um kind of watch them if they laugh or not and um, is there a scene in there that makes me go, oh shit, you know, like, I like that a lot. And there definitely is, um, particularly when Black Mask gets, uh, you know, spoiler alert, gets blown up. And I'm like, Dude, what the sick. fuck? Like, even that the, was sick. that was like, it, I had the same reaction in Joker when, uh, Joaquin shot <laughs> Robert De Niro. I'm like, oh shit. So, I mean, that, that's a big time deal. And then obviously, um, I loved, I, Besides the Huntress pulling her at the end, I love the fact that she went after the guys on her fucking roller skates. Like, that was... <laughs> I'm like, fucking Harley Quinn is the shit, you know? Like, going on her yeah. roller derby skates, and she's fucking these guys up in, like, classic cars with machine guns, and she has her fucking hammer or her bat or whatever that is. And um, so I'm going to go with uh, a 7.2 on this um, because I... There are there are way much more better enjoyable scenes and an enjoyable um, lasting effect than there isn't um, than there are b- bad ones. Like I said, there are some. The, I I feel like the Huntress whole thing together was kind of shitty, but um, I, I think everything else overwhelms it. So a seven point two is perfect for me. Okay, well that rounds our score out to a seventy one. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah, that's a good. I think good score. Probably be pretty close. What we got on the the Rotten Tomatoes? So on for the critics have it at seventy nine. Oh, nice. And the close. audience has yeah. it at seventy nine. Oh, that's pretty good. All right, I so dig we're it. Negative Nancys. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah, 
We're, we're lower on it than the critics and the audience. That's we are getting more critical in our old age. I think we are. I stand by our score. I think a 71. Yeah, I feel like it's 71 is pretty, is pretty solid. Yeah. I think I, I could have gone a little so. higher on my 6.5. I'm the optimist. Yeah. I just, I just, yeah. I, I think it was okay. I think that, yeah, you know. I stand by it. I... I, I think that I was gonna. I was like the whole time I was watching. I was thinking seven, 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 and then at the very end when they're at the taco place and <laughs> they build this fucking gang and like it's about to be like a, a whole thing for like future movies. And then Margot Robbie sneaks that back and steals her car and drives off. Like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not leading a squad. I'm fucking Harley Quinn. Like yeah. that's such a cool way to to end that relationship. So uh, that 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 bumped me up to a seven five. Okay, seventy nine. I think that's I think that's valid. And I think that. Uh yeah, if you guys you know, you don't you don't have to be a Harley Quinn fan to like this movie, but you will walk out a Harley Quinn fan because yeah. that's how cool it is. So mm-hmm. I agree. That's with awesome. That, yeah. All right, cool. Um, anything you guys want to plug before we sign off? Nope. Just nope. Uh, have a good week, bro. Thanks for listening. Thanks for uh, sticking with us. And I believe we're doing the Expanse next weekend. <laughs> We've been talking about doing the Expanse for a couple weeks now, and we it's keep a pushing it back for other stuff. But I'm liking it because I'm getting caught up on the whole series, and yeah, yeah. we'll be talking Expanse next week. So yep. excited to talk about that to delve yeah. into the, the universe. Hell um, yeah, dude! And as always, shout out to Action City, um, our mothership of comic book lore. And, our Rossi. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. A uh, little little sneak peek, um, and yeah, and as always, uh, follow us at Hop Heroes on uh, Hop Heroes Pod on Instagram, and Twitter, and thank you guys so much for listening. See you next week. Peace. See ya.